This is Algebra 2, Chapter 2, Section 7, in which we will study parent functions and transformations. When we talk about a parent function, what we're talking about is the base model function for a family of functions. Okay. A lot of functions have similar looking graphs. The simplest form of that function, of any of those functions that make the same type of graph, the simplest form we like to call the parent function. And then from the parent function, you can then transform that function to get other ones. The first one we're interested in is called the constant function. The constant function is rather dull. f of x equals a, some number. Notice it's not changing. There's no x here to plug in. Our function equals a. The graph is a horizontal line that goes through the point a. When it's just a constant function, it's boring. But that's our first one. The second one is called the identity function. And it's also pretty, pretty dull. f of x is equal to x. Whatever value I tell you, the function equals the same value. If I say f of 2 it equals 2. If I say f of 8, it equals 8. The identity function is a diagonal line. It's y equals x. So those two are pretty boring functions. Now the fun begins when we start having other types like the absolute value function. We remember him from the last time around, the absolute value of x, and we remember we got a v-shape out of it. And then there's one more parent function to talk about called the quadratic function. The quadratic function, the base model is f of x equals x squared. Another way to read this would be y equals x squared if you want to think of it as y. And when you have a quadratic function, you get a u-shaped thing. Make sure you show some curvature there between or when you're doing those quadratic functions. Make sure you show the u as opposed to the v of the absolute value. Now just starting from the base model functions we can make new functions out of those if we use transformations. We can use translations which move you around, move your graph around. We can use reflections, which flip them over. Or you can use dilations, which stretch them out. Okay. A translation moves a graph left or right, up and down. It just picks up the entire graph and moves it. A reflect it, and it keeps the same shape and it keeps the same size. A reflection flips it over some line, which is called the line of reflection. And when you do a reflection, the size and the shape don't change. A dilation, on the other hand, does change the size and the shape. It either stretches it or it shrinks it. And it can stretch vertically or it can stretch horizontally or shrink in either direction as well.
Now, if we look at the equation, we can see what type of transformation we're looking at and what kind of effect it is, just based on what the equation shows. So let's identify our parent function first so we know what we should be expecting. And then we'll talk about what kind of transformation we see. f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 3. That's kind of a giveaway. We're talking about the absolute value function. So that's our parent function is the absolute value. Now what kind of transformation do we have? There's no multiplication going on. There is a plus 3 here. That's going to cause the graph to shift to the left 3. That's a translation. And uh, when you have an addition inside, that's going to move you to the left. When you have a subtraction inside, it's going to move you to the right. Okay, it's the opposite of the direction you would expect. But a plus on the inside of the graph, or the uh, equation, moves you left. A minus moves you right. Consider our next one. We have f of x equals x minus 2 quantity squared plus 4. Well, we know, because we see the square here, what kind of graph we're talking about. We're talking about a quadratic function. Now again, I don't see any multiplication going on, so there's no dilations. What I do see is a subtract 2 on the inside and an add 4 on the outside. That's going to be two translations. The subtraction on the inside is going to move me to the right. On the outside, it goes the way you would expect it to. A positive would move you up. Had this been minus 4, it would be down 4. A couple of more of these kind. We have f of x equals negative x. Well, the basic function that we see, if we ignore the negative for a minute, the base function we see is the identity function, f of x equals x. When we have a negative value, what we have is a reflection on the x-axis. And then the last guy over here, f of x equals 4x squared. Well, we know what kind of function we're dealing with. That square tips us off to quadratic. Now we have multiplication going on. So we're going to get a dilation in the vertical direction. It's going to stretch it taller. There's a really nice table on page 112 in your book that shows you what the transformations do and how they change the graph. So make sure you take a good look at 112. You might want to consider putting that in with your notes, copying some of that information down to help you so that you have it available to you. Because as normal, you'll be able to use your notes come test day. So if you have that information in front of you, it'll work, it'll work with you to help you. So you're going to be identifying parent functions, and you're going to be identifying the transformations that are going on. Translations, reflections, or dilations. And looking at the equation along with this information on page 112 will really make that job simple for you. If you had questions along the way, as always, I hope you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.